This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. In this episode, we have Mel, Chief Product Officer at AppTweak. Mel, welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. Hi, I'm very glad to be here. All right, great. So um, let's set the, set the stage first. So on this show before, uh, we mentioned this quite famous by now data point a couple times. 65, 70% of all app installs are driven by search. So think about it this way. App developers and brands are getting like three out of four app users for their apps through built-in search on Google Play uh, Play Market or iOS App Store. And app store optimization has, has been the oldest app marketing technique, like pretty much since the, since the iTunes App Store was launched back in summer 2008, app developers were playing with multiple SEO techniques to increase ranking of their apps. A lot of mistakes, a lot of lessons were learned, trial and error, and so forth. So today we want to talk about how to do SEO for the other part of the app universe, the Google Play Store. And to do that, we have Mel from AppTweak. But as always, uh, let's talk about yourself. Tell us about what you were doing before, what are you doing now? Sure. Right now, I'm, I'm Chief Product Officer at AppTweak. I'm from Belgium. I've lived a couple of years in Chile, in Santiago. Well, ever since I graduated, I've been working in digital startups and scale-ups. I've actually helped launch an app in, in Santiago, in Chile. I've also worked for a, a SaaS product that kind of digitalized uh, different processes uh, in the car buying process over there. So mm-hmm. always, you know, digital space. And then when I came back to Belgium, I started to work for AppTweak. And yeah, I started as a consultant there to help big mobile apps and game publishers get started or, or get going with their ASO and kind of tweak their app to get you know more um, organic visibility on the App Store and the Play Store. And then gradually, I kind of moved into the product side. And today, I'm chief product uh, of AppTweak Tool. Do you, feel, do you miss Chile? It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful country. It's an amazing country. I definitely recommend to. to to go there and get a trip. It's like it has the most beautiful landscapes and you feel you go through different planets within the same country. It's, it's pretty amazing. You bet. I can just be, you know, picture some movies. I can imagine what it's like to be there. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely on, on my list to vi- visit in the future. Well, feel free um, to reach out if you need tips on that. <laughs> okay, great deal. Once all this pandemic is over, we can get back to our plans for traveling. <laughs> Okay, now uh, you mentioned AppTweak. So can you give us a quick intro uh, to what you guys are doing at AppTweak? Sure. So AppTweak is an app store optimization tool. So basically, it's a tool that um, provides data to app publishers, game publishers, on how their mobile app is, pro- uh, is performing on the App Store and, and Play Store. Um, so typically, uh, KPIs to see on which keywords they rank, uh, who else is ranking on those words, how they compare it to their competitors. So it's really about monitoring an app's visibility on the store and then finding ways to increase that visibility, finding, for instance, new potential keywords to, uh, to, to target uh, or comparing with, with competitors to get inspired from their strategy. So really getting, getting, giving sorry, visibility to app publishers on, on what's happening on the store. Um, so that's really our ASO tool. And then recently, we've also developed a market intelligence tool. So that's mm-hmm. more addressed to anyone who's doing any mobile, uh, I mean, market research on, on the mobile industry. But we also have a lot of, of insights there due to basically all the data that we've accumulated on the um, mobile apps over the last five, six years. All right, I see. Uh, like a month ago at App Promotion Summit London, working from home, I heard you've been recently to India to meet some of your clients. How was your trip to this one billion plus people country of our all? Yeah, that was that was quite an experience. That was very um, impressive. I guess we all know India is like a huge country with you know billions of, of people, 
And when you get there, it, you kind of start realizing what, what that means because before that, you know, one billion is it's just a number. And there were all these little signs that just make you realize how huge this country is. And um, especially from being from Belgium, which is tiny. I mean, I think India is like, big, it's bigger than, than Europe. And so, um, and there were these little details and very practically, um, especially because I was there for, for ASO, obviously, we found that the people there have very different views of, for instance, how are they going to expand their app? Uh, well, the, the next stage, you know, from a more European point of view would be, okay, well, uh, let's launch in an, another European country. They're really mm-hmm. talking about launching to a new city. That's already like a whole new uh, sea of users uh, that they're open to. And so it was, it was funny because they, they typically, ASO practitioners there, they want the data to be um, uh, divided to in, into town and regions rather than, I mean, the country level that we typically see in, generally in tools is really not enough because that the country is just so big. That level of detail is just not enough. So it, it was, we kept being confronted with those kinds of questions and, and the fact they have so many languages as well. So it was, yeah, really impressive experience. Amazing. So they, they're thinking on a different scale. We, it's just uncomprehensible, uncomprehensible idea for us. You know, when you have in a country like uh, several dozens of millions of uh, people or less or less than 10 millions of people, that's just hard to understand why, why it can be the case. I've been to Brussels. You have a very beautiful country. <laughs> Great, yeah. It's um, well, I love Brussels, but I'm not very subje- objective on that. But it's a great city to live in. <laughs> yeah, I see. So, okay, now let's uh, get to the major topic. Let's talk about ACO and specifically abstract optimization for Google Play. How's it different from doing ACO from for the iTunes App Store? Sure. Well, there there are many differences, and actually, that that trip to India was a huge, was very insightful from from that perspective. Because over there, well, the, the Play Store has ninety eight percent of of the market, so there was just no point in talking about the App Store. Right. And so that really made us like totally tune the the way we would present App Tweet. Because if you're in the U.S., typically the App Store is much more prominent than 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 the Play Store. And it's funny because the, yeah, both stores has very different approaches. Well, Google obviously is the one who invented SEO, and so their approach to ASO really follows that path. And so when Google defines how relevant your app is on on a specific keyword, there's lots of elements that are taken into account by by its algorithm and adding the words to your, you know, your title, your description and so on, that helps, but that has a very small weight compared to other elements that also, you know, play, play in that algorithm. Uh, whereas on Apple, well, apps, Apple's approach is really different because Apple actually gives you a dedicated keyword field, uh, which is a field that where, you know, as, as a app publisher, you can just indicate, oh, these are the list of keywords I want to rank on, by the way. And, and if you put those keywords, well, act, Apple will actually rank your app on those words. Then obviously, it's not that easy. After that, there's a series of, uh, again, of indicators Apple looks at to see, you know, if you should rank number one, two, three, or, or down at the bottom. But, you know, just telling Apple, hey, these are the words I want to rank on is much easier um, on the App Store than on the Play Store. So Google has uh, way more experience of dealing with keywords. They can leverage their, uh, you know, being the number one search engine in the world. So they, they know one thing or, or two about uh, how to actually rank content efficiently uh, on, on the basis of, uh, of multiple signals. They're not specific on keywords ex- precisely because this is one of, one of those you know, early tricks that uh, regular websites, uh, optimizers, uh, search optimization uh, technicians playing with. So they're not putting that much of a weight on keywords for the Google Play, right? Yeah, that's that. And I guess it's just that Google, I think more from an ad publisher point of view, the, the Play Store is just a bit more, it's it's more, it's less transparent than the App Store. The App Store is quite more, they, they kind of simplified the whole process about, hey, just give us a list of keywords and we'll try to, and we'll rank you on those words. Whereas Google is like, okay, you have to repeat keywords across your, your description, your title, your short description. And then based on that, but also based on lots of other elements, uh, Google will rank your app. So it's much harder to understand and, and, and follow on, on the Play Store. I see. So their uh, experience of dealing with a bunch of uh, black hat uh, search optimizers mm-hmm. in previous years give them a more cautious approach to how 
like how to make sure that uh, people will not be gaming its algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, but again, Apple obviously has yeah has considerably. I mean, right now, Apple also has a lot of experience on that, and it's. It, I wouldn't say it's easier to do black hat on Apple than on Google. Um, it's just both have this different approach. Where Google, I guess, uses more you know algorithms um, and and probably yeah complicated algorithms to define rankings. Uh, mm -hmm. Where on Apple, it's it's probably a bit more tangible, a bit more understandable. Even though it's that doesn't make it easy to trick um, either. All right. Uh, can you give us a few factors that are the most impactful in terms of uh, Android app high ranking in Google Play Store? What works the best? Sure. So obviously, I guess the first step is um, what we call keyword density, which is um, basically repeating the keywords that are most relevant for your app and you want to rank on. Well, if you want to rank on those words, they have to be somewhere in your title, your short description, and your description. And the more you repeat them, uh, the more weight you give to that word. And so the, the more likely you will rank on that word. Of course, uh, again, because we were talking about black hat, um, well, if you start keyword stuffing, typically that's something that Google flags immediately. And, um, and, and so it won't rank you on that keyword if you start stuffing that word all over your description. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, you, you, you repeat words, but you don't do it too much either. Um, so that's, that's, I guess, to get started. But then um, what actually defines if your app is going to rank number one or number two uh, and so on, um, I'd say it's, um, well, it's how you convert on that keyword. So, you know, people who are searching for a specific word, if they mm -hmm. find your app, they download your app. So that, that plays a lot of a uh, high role, the conversion, the download velocity. So are you, you know, as an app, are you getting downloads and are you getting downloads from that particular word? Um, and this is, so this actually works both on Apple and Google, but what really works on Google is the retention. So Google actually tracks um, after uh, 30 days, after 7, 15, and 30 days, how many people who downloaded your app from that specific keyword search, how many people still have that app downloaded on their phone. And if you have a higher retention from that keyword, that will definitely have a very positive impact on, your, um, on, your, on how your app ranks on that word. So um, that's really, I guess, the, the major element that uh, the uh, algorithm, the Google algorithm uses. Um, and then obviously there's a lot of other, other elements such as quality of your app, you know, if, if it has a low crash rate, if it has high average ratings. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the algorithm is quite, very complex. It has lots of elements. Um, but I guess the, the one with the most impact is really the retention um, on keywords. All right, uh, and I know that the uh, the actual length of the description on the Google Play can be up to four thousand words, uh, and um, obviously every app deserves the description that it, that describes the specific app and its features. And there's no gold rule like how many words should be in our description. Whatever it makes sense to express its features, why cool, why it's uh, something that like you will be looking for for a specific keyword, but can you see any correlation between the length of description and the app um, ranking on the Google Play, or it doesn't matter? So no, really, there, there, there's no rule about, you know, if you have a short description, uh, like, a, yeah, a short description will lead to better results than a long description. But typically, and this is what kind of makes that Google algorithm intelligent, and that's really the, the, the whole experience that Google has, it's really about, just making it natural. Um, and so if you don't have much to say on your app, then, and that can really be the case typically for um, hyper-casual games, they don't spend ages writing a, a nice long description. Um, right. So if you just have a few sentences, that's fine. And just make sure to you know place that key keyword in that, those sentences. Obviously, if your app is a bit more complex or and, and you have competition, you want to mm -hmm. add um, a catchy description that really highlights your top features. And so you know make it a bit more that can be like an element to convince your users to, to download your app. So, so it's definitely worth working on, uh, but uh, there's no rule. So I wouldn't say you need to use those 4,000 characters. That's not something I, that you specifically need to do. What you need to do is just build a nice description um, that has enough space so that you can repeat the keywords that you want to repeat without you know, making it sound like your keyword stuffing, but don't just repeat just for repeating you know, make it, make everything that you put in description should be useful from a user perspective. Gotcha. Now, 
Every marketer is obviously on a quest to figure out how to increase conversion for her or his app. Do you have any practical tips for people to learn? Well, definitely, because obviously I'm, I'm always on talking about ASO, so I'm always very keyword focused. But um, mm -hmm. I, I guess the first thing is, is keyword relevance. And this is like when you're defining what are the keywords you want your app to rank on, well, obviously you need to select keywords that are very relevant for your app. And so if people search for your app and they find your app, uh, but it has nothing to do with what they're searching for, um, obviously your conversion w won't be good. So you want to make sure that you know the keywords you rank on are actually relevant for your app and that from a user perspective, people who are looking for those words are potentially interested in, in your app. So I guess that's one. Then obviously there's the ratings. So an average rating and a high number of rating is always more um, convincing uh, then, you know, if I have an app that's, even if it's a five-star app, if it has two ratings, that's not very convincing. Uh, and obviously, uh, any app that has below a four-star rating, um, well, that's considered, uh, users tend to consider that that bad. So you want to make sure that your ra average rating is above that four-star level. Um, and there's lots of tips on how to, you know, increase your, your, your ratings. Uh, so there's a lot of material there on, on online. Then there's the visuals. So obviously, you want to make sure that your screenshots are appealing, that they stand out, uh, because you have to always remember that users, they're, sometimes they're, they're browsing, that they, they're doing a keyword search, but then they kind of browse through the, the results to see, okay, what is the app that I'm going to download? Um, and so you want to make sure that you know, your screenshots, since that's the, very, the most visual element of your, your app page, uh, that they stand out, that they're appealing, and that also they showcase the most valuable features of your app. So you want to make sure that you put their... Um, any element that really differentiates you from, from other apps that really convince users that they should download your app and not another one because it has this really cool feature. Um, and so that's really interesting to do A-B testing there uh, to see, okay, what are the screenshots that convert better? So you can A-B test different screenshots, but you can also just A-B test the order of the screenshots. And sometimes just by putting this cool feature in first position rather than in third position, just that can have an impact on, on your conversion. So that's really important. And then same thing with video, obviously video. Now on Google, it also auto plays. So it, it captivates the user's attention, uh, which okay. can be very nice. But again, there's no gold rule here. And uh, we've seen it that with all the experience that we've made with, with clients, that video does not always increase your conversion. Sometimes it leads to great results. So we've seen like conversion go up 30% uh, once we've added a video. Uh, but sometimes... Um, there's no difference, or sometimes there's actually uh, the, the, the version without video converts better than the one with video because it's very, so the video attracts the, the users, it attracts its attention, but it also, you know, distracts the user. And so now he's looking at video rather than thinking about downloading your app. So you have to be careful with that. And I guess, yeah, two more tips is be careful about the dark mode uh, because people tend to forget that the, there's a dark mode. And so um, if you're working on screenshots or video, you want to make sure that they look good both on dark mode and light mode. And another little trick is, uh, uh, well, this, again, it really depends on the type of app that you have. Uh, but with, with some clients, we've seen that just adding emojis in the description or in the short title, uh, sometimes that can really help uh, in conversion as well. Yeah, emojis uh, are awesome everywhere. Like in the email title, they can uh, change the conversion like the, because they're expressing more emotions there. Mm -hmm. So precisely why we have uh, why we like images more than words because they convey more emotions, more information than, than just a few letters. And yeah, I I totally missed the, this point about the dark mode because I would I, I would make this mistake if I was doing abstract optimization because it's new I, and um, you don't you don't uh, consider that it, it can be the case that your screenshots will look awful in a dark mode. So it's yeah. a really, it's a really good uh, hint. Now you've been in the app optimization business for a while. Can you talk about uh, how Google uh, play ACO changes over time? And if you compare it with doing ACO for App Store, uh, do you consider it more difficult, more time consuming? Yeah, sure. So um, I guess both stores change a lot over time, and well, you know. But being chief product of an ASO tool, that's quite a nightmare because we constantly have to update, uh, make sure our tool is update, up to date with the latest changes that Apple mm -hmm. and Google are making. Um, and they very rarely announce those changes. So we kind of just discover them 
that day. So yeah, it can be very annoying, obviously from, from my point of view, but again, for publishers, just as annoying because, uh, well, you know, the ASO rules keep changing uh, and what worked two months ago might not work again um, today. So very time consuming to, you know, keep, keep it up. One good news is that we have seen that over time that the Google Play Store, the changes it's made, at least in terms of layout in the Play Store, tend to really um, move towards what Apple is doing. And so I, I guess over the last year, if you would compare the Play Store a year ago and the App Store, and you do that same comparison today, both look much more similar uh, today. Mm-hmm. So that is like something that's nice because um, although I'm not saying that, you know, doing AS today, you can do like the same work and then just copy paste it on the App Store and the Play Store, that, that's not true. Uh, but at least it's not as different as it, as it used to be. So that's, I guess, a plus. Another thing that's, I think, making it harder for ASO practitioners and, and app publishers is that both stores are really putting more and more emphasis on the, the browse and the, uh, the browsing behavior of users. And so as you mentioned at the beginning, um, 65 to 70% of, of users download apps through a search. Both stores are actually working to reduce that number and making browse just bigger. And so typically on the, on the Play Store, uh, when you think of it, if you open your Android phone and you open your Play Store, the first a page you'll land on is a tailored page uh, of featured apps that Google puts in front of you saying, hey, these are all apps that might interest you based on your latest downloads, based on your app usage, based on a series of um, personal elements. And then also, uh, if you think of it, when you find an app, even for a keyword search, and when you're on the app page of that app, if you scroll to the bottom of the app page, you'll actually see Google, again, suggests a series of related apps or similar apps or apps you might also like. And so everywhere, there's always this um, suggestion of showing users other apps so that, you know, if you're not happy with what you're seeing now, there's, there's something else you could, that might be interesting for you. And so this makes comp- competition on the store really, really fierce. And so as an app, you really need to convince quickly, like capture the intention of the user and then kind of convince quite quickly to download your app uh, rather than, you know, if he has to start scrolling down to the bottom of the page and then he starts, you know, browsing across the similar apps where well, you kind of lost it there. So that's kind of a shame. And, and, and actually, Apple is really doing the same. They, they introduced the whole Today tab where they features apps as well. So, yeah, really both stores are going towards more like explore traffic. So, yeah, and then you were asking, which is like, is, is Google more time consuming than, than Apple? Yep. It's a hard one because, uh, again, it really depends on where you put your focus. I've seen when we, when we typically work with um, clients in the US, they tend to be 100% focused on Apple. And then they kind of, you know, do something similar on Google, but their focus mm-hmm. is really on Apple. Whereas in India, that's totally the other way around. So first of all, um, yeah, the, where you put your time, I guess, depends where you, you know, where there's the most value depending on where you are. Uh, but then... Yeah, well, I still tend to think that on the Play Store, because that algorithm is a bit more complex and a bit more like uh, less transparent uh, or harder to understand than the app there, and then on the App Store, it, it it can be more frustrating to do ASO on the Play Store because you tend to I don't know you would do a, a big update where you change the keywords you put in your title, your short description, and the results on the Play Store are always much slower to show. Uh, we typically recommend users to wait up to six to eight weeks before they actually to measure to fully measure the impact of a change they've made on the Play Store. Whereas actually on the App Store, after two or three weeks, you can already have an idea of the impact of the of the change that you've made. So yeah, it's a bit more you know you need to be a bit more patient on on the Play Store. Well, I can only add on top of what you said, and people are complaining we have only two app stores. Imagine if we had 20, 25 app stores. That would be a nightmare to follow all those changes. But, and yeah. and there, they actually, there, there are more. There's not just the app on the Play Store. Uh, but yeah, those are probably the main ones. But um, the, you know, in China, they have their own stores. Yeah, there are the smaller ones in China where Google Play is forbidden. Uh, so yeah. All Android apps are available only through the third-party local app stores in yeah. China. That, that's right. But yeah, but like I've said, we're, we're focusing uh, for the most part on these two big giants. So having such a good grasp on how Google Play uh, ranks apps and doing ACO for it, is there something you wish Google would improve for its higher Android app store? In your wow, opinion? yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so many things. 
But I guess, yeah, my answer more than, you know, on the Android Play Store, I, I, it's more like things that I like to see in the Google console, you know, whereas, in, you know, once you have an app and you get all this data from your app, there's a lot of data that's missing that Google doesn't provide. And this can be just really frustrating. And on the one side, it's quite ironic because that's actually why ASO tools like AppTweak exist. It's to kind of compensate the fact that the, Google, the Play Store and the App Store aren't sharing this information. And so typically, what I, I mean, one goal data that I think both stores should have is to um, communicate on the number of searches that are performed on a specific keyword on a daily basis and, and by country. For instance, when you're doing SEO, you would look at the Google Trends of keyword. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that's something that neither the App Store nor the Play Store disclose. And I find that so frustrating that you don't know, you know how many people are actually searching for this word. Right. So we have ways to compensate that um, on, on these tools, on, on the ASO tools. But uh, still, I, I, I mean, it's so frustrating to say, why can't you know, the App Store and the Play Store actually share this data? It's really frustrating. Another one typically is Google. And this was actually quite big when they announced it. They They now share the number of downloads that your app is making on specific keywords, which is great. This is like, uh, I'd say this is gold data when you're doing ASO. Uh, But then there was one glitch is that actually that data is shared worldwide. So as an app, I know that my app has been downloaded this many times from a specific keyword across the world. And again, it's like, it's it's kind of like, like we were talking about India. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, that's cool, but I want this to be break down by countries so that I can really adapt my strategy per country. I mean, knowing that, you know, this many people downloaded my app from this keyword worldwide, that's not very helpful. And so, you know, again, it's like, okay, it was a great, I mean, a great step forward, but, you know, kind of disappointing because when they announced it, I remember we were so excited about this, this new KPI. And then, you know, once you start using it, you're like, okay, actually, it's not that actionable because of that because it's not by country. So quite frustrating there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it is quite frustrating. <laughs> Market is huge. You have to know uh, this number country by country. Otherwise, it's not really helpful. That's, that's for sure. Okay, now at this point of the show, I have a few questions, a few quick fine questions to you. And the first one will be this. Are you iOS or Android person? It's a hard. So I'm an iOS person. I have an iPhone. I have a Mac. But I'm I'm getting more and more frustrated with the whole, you know, Apple strategy of, um, you know, once you have an iPhone, well, two years later, it's already outdated. So yeah, boy, my boyfriend has an Android, and I'm kind of like being more and more tempted to switch to the to the other side. For for now, I want iOS. <laughs> I see. So the future will tell. Uh, yeah. Can you remember your first mobile phone? Yeah, it was, um, all I remember, it was a Siemens, it was blue, and mm-hmm. it had a color screen. So, I, and at that time, that was like so modern. Like I had this cool phone, which actually had a colored screen. So yeah, it was a Siemens. All my friends had a Nokia. Yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I can, I don't think I can remember the time when Siemens was in the business of doing smartphones. It's, it feels like ages ago. Yeah, uh, Crazy. It's crazy. Well, what is your favorite app now and why? I'd say my favorite app is basically it's WhatsApp, just because that's, that's by far the app I use the most. And, and you know, especially in these times, it's, it's actually really helped to, you know, keep contact with friends, uh, uh, call friends and, and, you know, just stay, stay in contact, even though we're all closed down in, in our homes. So yeah, not, not a very original answer, but yeah, I guess WhatsApp by far is my favorite app. Okay. Now, what new app technologies are you most excited about? What things are you waiting for to be actually implemented in apps that right now you can see on the horizon, but they're not being you know, ready for their prime time? They're still out there. Well, actually, one thing that's already pretty advanced everywhere, but not in Belgium, is everything that's linked to mobile payments. So I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting for this guy. I mean, in the UK, everyone just pays with Apple Pay and, and I don't know why in Belgium that's not something that we do. And, uh, and even, you know, a couple of days ago, I never have cash on me. And, and, you know, when people say, oh, you have to pay like cash, I always find it so annoying. So I guess, yeah, that's one thing. Um, but more, you know, in general, like, like future technology, um, 
I I don't know. I believe a lot in like, so it's like making it easier to talk to your phone. I feel like today when I talk to my phone and it types stuff, it's always making mistakes or, you know, being it, like making it connected with other things. Like, I don't know, just say to my phone, Hey, can you order this on Uber Eats? And it just does it. And, um, you know, now like Siri kind of does that, but I always get mad at Siri because he never does what I actually want him to do. And so, you know, I guess, you know, go a bit better, more in that direction. Or I don't know, it could be connected to my house. And, you know, when I'm going home, I say, Hey, uh, can you put the temperature on that degree so that when I'm home, you know, it's already there. Um, I guess things like that, like more about, yeah, just saying stuff to your phone and then it just does the job for you. I see. Yeah, definitely. Siri has a character. And uh, even though progressively she becomes uh, sound better and better at, like I, right now, I don't think I can kind of distinguish the automatically generated voice from a real one, but still you can easily confuse her just um i don't know it's 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 it's, it's frustrating that it's moving that, that slow okay yeah, i felt every time that i asked stuff to siri and then she just gives me a google search and i'm like ah no just give me the answer i don't know so yeah, yeah. i think siri a bit yeah siri siri okay that was my last question but before i let you go how can people get to know what you do um, yeah, sure. So definitely, um, people can, yeah, connect with me on, on LinkedIn and well, more for those who are interested about, um, ASO thing, well, I definitely invite to follow, um, the app tweet blog. I publish a lot of content there. Um, that's then republished on, on LinkedIn and, and, uh, or the Twitter account as well. Uh, but I'm not a very Twitter person. So I guess, yeah, uh, best way to connect with me would be on, on LinkedIn and yeah, happy to exchange. Like people have questions on, on ASO or, or, or on how to optimize their app. I'm more than happy to, to, to talk to, with them. Um, so yeah, I guess LinkedIn would be the best way to do, to do so. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your time and coming on our podcast, Mao. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. And that was Mal, Chief Product Officer at Apt Week. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our, our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. Once you subscribe, you'll be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review and comment. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. See you next week. Bye. This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.